Hello everyone, Casey here from Maston Labs, and today we are going through this very, very new public beta of the Vintage Slide Film Packs new tools. And these are tools that we're gonna be working on, but we wanted to give them to you because we already think that they are incredible. They're gonna be packaged with the Vintage Slide Film Pack, so if you have already purchased that, you are going to have access to these new tools. Um, Here's some images that I'm gonna be editing with that, um, but let's take a look and just see what the tools are that are going to be included. Now, I already have this installed, but you'll see I have the, the Vintage Slide Film and the Vintage Slide Film beta groups here in my preset folder. And we'll go ahead and we'll just take a quick look. So this is the preset folder that you're used to. It has all of these tools that uh, we included with the launch of the Vintage Slide Film Pack. And now I'll open this next one and we'll scroll down and you'll see just how different these things are. So of course on here we have the film look and the tone profiles. And as you go down, you'll see we still have the film look, we still have the tone profiles, though they do work in a slightly different way. Um, below that, you'll see our AI tool section, just some <laughs> awesome tools. Again, very excited to show these to you. Our specialty tools, and that is just sort of, uh, we're, we took the tools that existed above and we wanted to streamline the process of using these. So we have them all here and we have a handy dandy little reset for tone and tool. Um, so any of these tools, any of these tones that you apply, you can just use this and it will reset it all back to the preset instead of you having to go in and actually just you know click the reset button and just resetting every possible setting you had. This is just for those uh, the extra tones and tools, which is really nice. Um, the last thing is of course grain and grain hasn't changed. Grain is uh, the same grain that you have uh, loved and really enjoyed throughout this process and we didn't want to mess with that because we knew uh, it's good. So one of the things to be aware of is that we're making use of one of the new updates that Lightroom had and that is this right here. It's the preset slider. So generally speaking, if you go in and you click any of the presets, you will get are given access to a preset slider. Now this is something that we can either turn off, turn on, and we want you to test this to see what you think. So a lot of people are already using this, you know, so here's extra Chrome and I can dial that back. But what's happening is I'm actually removing parts of that film look and that's not really what I want to do. So I'm going to leave this alone. But when we go to our tone profiles, these tone profiles that are now applying uh, have all soft. If I want it to be more soft, I can push that up. If I want it to be less soft and go back to sort of square one, I put it to zero. So zero means that nothing has changed and 100 means you have the settings that we have dialed in, and then 200 is double of whatever those settings are. So again, if I were to go to all hard, I can go back to our normal image or just push all the way up, and you can see sort of like where that sweet spot is. I think if I was going to use all hard on this image, I would probably, I don't know, I think it looks good right here. But what we wanted to do is give you guys a little bit more control over your images. With these updates, you are still allowed to sort of split the tone profiles. So if you do all soft and then you wanted highlight hard, you can do that, and you're still having shadow soft on there. Now let's just take one step further to just sort of seeing exactly how these work. I'm gonna go back to uh, Ektachrome and I will click this. I'm gonna click on our masks. So you'll see here there are two things that say tone profile not applied. And what that means is that when I click a tone profile, you'll see that something will pop up. It'll say, ah, vintage slide film shadow hard, vintage slide film highlight hard. And I can you know, hide one of those or hide this one and then effectively you know, this is just highlight hard, or this is just highlight hard. And as I go ahead and move over, we now have, I can do highlight soft. So we have shadow hard, highlight soft. And if I want to go back to just sort of square one, I can click this and this says, you know, tone profiles not applied. And that's just by clicking this again. One of the benefits to having these exist. So the way that they work is they're built into a a luminance range. And with this, if you want to, you can now subtract different parts of that. So say I want uh, the shadows in my subject to not be affected by this luminance range. I can click, you know, minus subject, and then I can say select subject, and I can say, okay, I want to subtract anything that's in that subject from having shadow hard. Boom. It allows me to do that so quickly. Um, and conversely, of course, I can do that with um, you know, highlight hard or all soft or whatever, I can pick that, but it allows me to be a little bit more specific of what I want to affect with these tone profiles. So if you have 
um, a, a really you know a hard image but you just like you love the tones but you want to knock out some of the highlights in the background you can hit highlight soft on that background and then subtract the subject or after you do this you can right click on here and invert and that will actually take the highlights out of the rest of the image and apply that highlight soft to your subject. And just the subject was just really nice. I could see this really being helpful in a, a later photo that we'll be working on, but one that has a, you know, a really bright white dress. And I don't care if the rest of the image goes really bright, but I do want to maintain the detail on that wedding dress. And I know that highlight soft is sort of the way to do that. So let's go ahead. I'm just going to go back again to square one and we'll walk through an edit. I'm going to close this real quick. Okay. So with our editing, we are still using the three step workflow. Actually, I'll hit reset to just really truly bring us back to square one. Um, and I'm going to use our three step workflow. Now, if you're unfamiliar, the three step workflow is to apply a preset, adjust for exposure, I think in this one, I'll just bring it up a little bit, and then correct white balance. And that's with the temperature and tint. Um, for this, I think I could just cool it off a little bit, you know, not too much, but just enough to sort of, uh, I don't know, bring it down a little bit and just remove a little of this um, over orange from the skin. But I think that's looking pretty good. Now that we've worked through our three steps, I'm going to go ahead and create a couple copies of this so that we can just sort of see where we started from. Okay, so we have the tone profiles that we've gone over. Tone profiles are there as a solution to some of the contrast problems that you may face with images. So uh, if you know highlights are blown out, you can use the soft to recover, or if the highlights are not strong enough and you need more contrast, that's when you would use you know highlight hard and, and also with uh, shadow hard. It's hard, adds contrast, and soft is recovering sort of information, uh, bringing it back. Now below that, we have our AI tools and this, is where I get really excited. Um, so we're gonna we'll go to our first image and let's talk about Spotlight. What Spotlight does is it creates a separation between your subject and the background. And like I said before, these tools work so so well with this new slider that Lightroom has implemented. So here in this image, you'll see that you know it's been applied. Let's do a quick before and after. I'll undo and then redo, and you can just see that that separation. Now, if this feels too strong to you, we go over to that slider and we'll pull it back. You know, here's zero and I can just edge it in. And really, it's just dropping the background exposure and bringing her up um, at the same time. And it's doing that just and it just creates enough separation. So if I were to look between this and so here's where we were and this is where we are. I mean, that's just such so much more of a powerful image. Um, I think potentially uh, her exposure is still a little hot. So I could just pull this back a little bit. Yeah, okay, that is looking really great. Awesome. Okay, now that we've done that, I'm gonna to move to the next tool, which is the light and area assist. And light and area assist essentially works like if you were to overexpose film and it will bring up your exposure a little, but it also does this in a segmented way. So it brings up that background exposure and a little less, it is still bringing up the subject's exposure, but it's bringing it up a little less. And by doing that, it's creating this much, much different environment. So just to take a look between these, you know, new tools is so here is our spotlight. Here is our light and airy. And let's move on to the last one, which is uh, I didn't even think it was going to be one of my favorite looks. And it is. And actually here, I'll go ahead and I'll create one last copy so that we can compare all four looks. So I'll move back here. Here's our standard edit. You know, this is with just the, the preset exposure and correcting the white balance a little. This looks great, just to say this already looks good. But with the spotlight tool, we're able to separate our subject. And with the light and airy tool, we're able to sort of bring up the exposure of the entire environment and in a way that just feels softer. And for those people who really enjoy light and airy looks, this tool is a no brainer. It is the fastest way you're gonna be able to get that light and airy look without having to think about dodging and burning or any of those just sort of excessive tools. You know, we want you to have the power to make these beautiful images that you're trying to make in the easiest possible way. So, okay, with all that said, let's move on to our next tool. And that is the dark and moody assist tool. 
it works on the opposite side of the light and airy. So for instance, with dark and moody, it's like you underexpose for a photo, but then on the you know Fuji Frontier scanner, you try to correct that exposure. Um, and sometimes that can give a really beautiful mood war, mood war, uh, boudoir, but sure, mood war uh, works well. Uh, so let's go ahead. I'm just going to apply this and we'll take a peek. So already you can see this is a look that you have not seen with Mass and Labs before. It is crushing those shadows. It's bringing down the whites in the image. If I look over at my histogram, you can actually see that exactly what's happening. It is doing both of those things. It's sort of clipping the image in a nice way, but it's bringing a fade that you would see in actual film that's underexposed. And it is unreal. Now for me, if I thought that this was too faded, of course, again, we can go back to that slider. I can go back to zero. Boom, this is where we started. And I can just slowly work into where I think that I want that fade to be. Right there. Okay, cool. That's I think that's my look. And then I think I'm actually going to, just because I want this to really feel dark and moody, I'm gonna bring down that exposure more. I want this to really sit a little bit more in the shadows. Um, and that is just, that looks so good. And for me, whenever I see an image that is faded like this, I'm always looking for grain. I want grain. I want that grit. That's sort of what the faded look reminds me of. So I'm going to go ahead and just apply this 35 millimeter grain. And I mean, that looks amazing. Again, so let's just see. Here is sort of like, here's where we started. And here's where we are. Beginning there. And then if we were going to go all the way back to the beginning, here to here. I mean, wild. Okay, so here is just the base edit again. Still looks good. Then we have spotlight, which is really helping with that subject separation between the subject and the background. We have light and airy, which is bringing that light look that you just is so hard to get. And then moudoir or boudoir, moudoir. I like moudoir better. Let's take a look at all of these different edits. Essentially with this new toolkit, we are allowing you to relight your photos. That is absolutely wild to me. Uh, just that in one photo, one preset, you can get all of these looks, adding so much more versatility into your photos. And we are beyond excited for you to get your hands on this. I, I really like, <laughs> we can't go back. It's, it's too good and we love it. Uh, but we want you, again, this is just a beta test, uh, and we want you to get your hands on it, you know, see how you like it, and we'd love to hear your feedback. Um, okay, so uh, before I continue to be too excited, let's go ahead, we'll move on to our next image, and we'll talk about the last one of the tools that is within the AI tool um, kit. And here, I'll go ahead, we're gonna, of course, of course, I have to straighten this photo. Um, and on this image, I think I'm gonna use Velvia. Velvia is sort of this very, you know, powerful, strong, surreal look. Um, and it just adds like a crazy amount of color to it that I, that I, that I really like in a, uh, a really clean way, which is, uh, odd to say, but I, I, yeah. So let's go ahead. I've, I've, uh, applied the preset. I've adjusted the exposure. Uh, I think I might, let's see, I'm going to warm it up just a little bit. And now let's talk about sky save. Now this sky isn't the most blown out sky I've ever seen but you will notice a difference when I click on our next tool, which is sky save. Boom. And what that's doing, so it's bringing down the exposure just in the sky and it's doing it in a very gradual way, the same way that you would use something like a neutral density filter. Um, and again, if this feels too strong to you, dial it back. This slider is really something that is allowing you to have that extra level of control while still giving you the tool that is helping you to achieve the look that you want within your photo. So if I wanted to dial it back, I can dial it back. If I want to make it even stronger, which that doesn't look good, I wouldn't do that, but you can. Um, <laughs> let's see if I do that and then I am brightening it up. I'm really looking to sort of expose for the shadows in their faces. Uh, and then I can pull this back until I feel like it's good. Uh, and I mean, right there, like, that looks like a good image to me. Now, Sky Save does work in the background to these other AI tools. So I still can use something like Spotlight. So with Spotlight, I can, again, just sort of darken the background, brighten the, the subject in front of me, and we can play with that just a little here and there. Um, you know, here's at zero, and if I wanna bring them up a little bit, there I can. <laughs> That's looking pretty good, maybe a little heavy-handed, but uh, I don't know, I kinda like it, it's fun. Um, and again, if we want to, we can go back to this sort of tone and tool reset and boom, now we're back at the sort of Velvia standard. We didn't lose any of the exposure adjustments. We didn't lose the corrections that we made to our white balance. 
and we're just sort of back to the original base edit that we know we already like. Um, so just to show you how fast I can go in this edit from the beginning point. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead quickly. I will just draw this over to straighten it. Boom, Velvia. I'm going to bring up the exposure a little bit. I'm actually going to use soft because I want to see a little bit more detail here. We'll crank that up and then we'll do sky safe. And I'm going to dial this back just a hair just to sort of get a more balance. Um, yeah, boom. That's how fast it was to go from this to this. And it took that took no time. That was so easy. Um, of course, we do have these other tools, um, most of which you're, I'm sure you're familiar with. We have lens correction, which is going to help with distortion and vignetting in your images. We have orange reduction, which is going to sort of take the edge off, where in the case of Velvia, it kind of corrects the skin. Um, and sometimes with Velvia, skin can feel just really, really orange. Um, but uh, the orange reduction for Velvia does a great job of just sort of bringing that back to normalcy. Um, however, in a photo like this, I don't know, I think it looks... Uh, I think it looks nice with that sort of extra powerful orange here. We have strobe soften, which would help if you were using a strobe. A lot of people are using it just as to give an extra level of softening contrast. And with a preset slider, we can now dial that back or forward. I can take more contrast off, less contrast off, and you can really dial it in for just sort of fine tuning your strobe power. So if it's like a really powerful strobe, boom, you can just like really crank it. If it is, you just want to take a little bit of that edge off, there you go. All right, and we'll do a quick before and after. And just again, that took no time to get there. And <laughs> it was and it was fun. It was fun to do. It's uh, these tools are so much fun. It's just a, you can look back at the photos that you've already edited and you're going to look at them in a brand new way. It's so cool. OK, let's move on to our next image, you know, especially uh, me. I'm a portrait photographer. So looking at an image like this, I want to make sure that uh, just everything lines up exactly how I want. This is a quick one because I want this to be that dark and moody look. We already have a dark background. I'm gonna use Provia on this one. Uh, Provia is a nice, really just neutral film uh, that you can really go either way. I think you can make Provia look good in a cool environment or a warm environment. And uh, not all films to me have that versatility, but I think Provia really does. So I'm gonna I think exposure looks good, so I, I didn't mess with that. I applied the preset, I skipped exposure, moved right to uh, the white balance correction. My guess is that they shot this with a, a strobe. Let's see, sometimes you can see what modifiers people use if you look um, in there, the catch lights in their eyes, and it does look like someone was using maybe a some kind of soft box, maybe a strip box. Um, but they did a great job. Oh, yeah, I see this is Andres Schramm, who is a phenomenal photographer. Um, so we'll go ahead. I've applied Provia. I'll go Shadow Soft. Yeah, it's looking good. Maybe I want to recover a little bit more of those shadows just to uh, soften the image a little. Um, I don't need to recover any of the highlights. And then we'll go to Dark and Moody Assist. And Dark and Moody Assist is going to do its magic and give that fade. Now, on this image, again, it is a little too powerful, a little too strong for me. There's two ways we can approach this. One is to really drag down that exposure, but that is not really helping with the level of sort of, it feels faded, it feels gray. So for me, I'm going to just take my slider from the dark and moody and I'll pull it back. And then we can just play with that until we get to that sweet spot of where I think I want that fade to exist. And I think right there on this particular image feels really nice. Um, and then because I like doing it on dark and moody images, I'm gonna add that grain in um, and yeah, boom. I mean. So great. That's like, that's iconic. That's such an iconic photo. Um, great, <laughs> great job, Andres. Uh, I love this one. And uh, yeah, all right, let's go ahead and let's move on to our next image. This image is a great one. And this particular one will really allow us to use sort of all of the tools. We can use all the tools at our disposal on this one and really make a difference. Um, on this one, I'm going to use, uh, let's do, let's do Velvia. Why not? You know, Velvia is, again, that super strong, super saturated and contrasty film. Um, I'm going to, do I want to change the exposure? Let's see. I don't think I need to on this one either. Uh, cool it off just a little bit. I'm going to use all soft to just soften a little bit of that contrast. And let's take a look at what these could look like. Spotlight really just making them stand out. It makes you feel like you're, you know, maybe you hit them with like a giant softbox or a giant strobe, but it's giving that separation between them and the background that is just 
so powerful, especially like think of delivering something like this to your client where they are in this incredible environment, but really the most incredible thing is of course them. And you can really just, I mean, shine a light to, to excuse the pun on them and highlight exactly what they are. So sometimes if I'm really going like, I mean, you can go bonkers with this at this point at 200, generally speaking, that's a little far. But if I wanted to, I could come back in and I could correct for them so that they look a little more normal, um, but the background is just totally crushed. That look isn't necessarily for me. I'm gonna undo that, we'll back it up. Um, I think right here is just sort of the sweet spot for how I like to edit. Um, let's go ahead, I'm gonna create a copy of this and we'll go the other direction. I'm gonna go with the light and area assist. And again, the light and area assist is going to brighten everything up in the environment. It's really just you know lightening everything up. And here we'll start to see just how much of a different look you are again relighting these images um, i think with this one you know we can see exactly where we're coming from we're coming from you know here's our zero which is sort of that base edit and then as we dial in that background everything's coming up just a little bit in sort of that soft pastel way and i think this is just such a special look um, that just so many photographers are really looking for and it will really give you that opportunity to have that look for your clients that they are after that they are hounding for and you can have that look in so much faster time these tools are here to take out the guesswork and to make it a more streamlined efficient effective editing process for you and you know all of your images i know when i would shoot weddings you'd come back with you know four or five hundred images and it just feels like such a hassle to try to get everything dialed in just so but with the Mastin three-step workflow and these tools you can get exactly what you and your client are looking for in no time at all it's awesome um so okay let's go to our next one oh, man all this pink so much color i kind of gotta go for velvia again it's sort of a standout for me i'll go ahead i'm going to correct for exposure first i think i'm going to pull this up you know i'm looking at my subject i want them to be exposed correctly um, over kind of anything else uh, for me with my clients i want to make sure that my clients are looking good first and of course i do want the rest of the image to look good but it's most important that the clients look good first so let's take our last step of correcting the white balance i'm going to warm this up uh, quite a bit i'm looking down here at these uh at these pavers i know that they are more gray um, and i'm pushing them towards where we started and i'll hit undo as you can see it's very blue down here now i could use the white dropper tool but each film sort of has its own white balance baked into that i don't really want that what i want to do is i want to push this to a place where these are looking closer to that neutral more natural but i'm still maintaining good clean skin tones so okay there we go we've we've done our three-step workflow now for sort of these extra tools i'm going to use all soft and i think i'm actually going to push this pretty far all the way just get a little bit more of that detail back here recover a little bit more of the information in this dress and yeah okay so it looks like it could be a light and airy one that's looking pretty good uh if we want to do a spotlight and really have them stand out let's see here we go and we're just bringing up a little bit more exposure on them but still keeping that background under control i'm not doing anything totally wild but it's just helping to separate them from the background you notice them more on those occasions so here i'll go ahead i'm going to hit undo for the uh, spotlight we'll create a virtual copy and then i'll do that one more time so we can see a little side by side Click spotlight. I think I had that at about 57. And here, here's our little side by side. You can really see how much more prominent and just sort of the focus of the photo the subject is on the right than on the left. But I mean, still looking good. Um, on the left, it's the light and airy look. On the right, it's sort of that is that subject forward look. Um, now, this isn't really a dark and moody photo, but hey, why not? We're here. So I'll go ahead. Um, and apply this and yeah i mean you can see the fade here with this uh, and it it's looking pretty good i i i'm feeling i think with velvia you need to push this a little further if you're looking for that and now that we have the dark and moody on there i'm going to use that 35 millimeter grain to add that texture that i just love with those faded looks um okay cool now let's move on to our very last one we're going to skip back to ectochrome um, it's one of my favorites in this pack. Of course, I guess I like them all, but uh, Ektrachrome just sort of has to me this very unique feel. It feels like the film I want to shoot the most. Um, and I think it does such a great job, specifically with dark and moody images. So I'm gonna go right there. You know, I'm gonna go all hard. We're gonna get really contrasty with this. I'm gonna push this all hard 
wow, push it all the way um, and just really create that contrast, that differentiation in contrast. Um, if I want them to stand out, we can do spotlight. Let's take a look. Boom. Now this, that, that really did a great job of covering a lot of the detail, um, just sort of in the shadows while still keeping it dark. And you know, now I'm darkening the environment by pushing it up and I can really just make them stand out. Oh man, that's so cool. So here's zero and then just pulling them in. And what, what a totally unique look that you're able to recover just the shadows on them while still being able to separate them from the background. Okay, enough of that. Let's go back to our dark and moody. And, oh, man, that looks so cool. It's right out of the gates. Okay, <laughs> sorry for getting a little too excited. I think I might pull this out back just a hair, but I do like this lower exposure. Um, and I'll hit our 35 millimeter grain to add texture to the whole image. And there you go. It's that easy. That looks so good. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> you can tell, obviously, we're all very excited about these tools. I think they are just such a, man, just such a winner. Um, and we want you to get your hands on them. So this beta is available to those of you who have purchased the Vintage Slide Film Pack. And it is only available currently for uh, Lightroom. It works the best on the desktop. Uh, it's a little broken on mobile, the way that Adobe treats presets and sort of these selections and AI tools. You lose control of the slider and you have to update each one of the selections per image. And it's just really not great. <laughs> so we don't suggest using this on the uh, Lightroom mobile app yet until they can kind of figure that out. Um, so yeah, just desktop, just for Lightroom. Um, we're hoping to figure out a way to have some of these tools come over for our Capture One users, but we wanted Lightroom users, we wanted you to have the opportunity to really take advantage of the strength, the power, and this the versatility, the sheer versatility that you get with all of these new beta tools that we've made for you. So with that, go play, go show us your images, you know, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at support at mastinlabs.com. You can also reach us directly at m.me forward slash mastinlabs, where you can just sort of talk to us through a messenger. You can send us images if you want to see what your images will look like edited with our presets. Or if you're curious what one of these tools will do to one of your images, send them our way. We are here to make your editing more effortless and easy. And we really think that with this new beta pack, you're going to just have the time of your life. Okay. With that, have a great day and happy editing.